Echo 4, starting my second sweep to the west. I'm seeing much more activity this time. Multiple contacts. Echo 4, copy. Our contacts confirmed hostile. Echo 4, no hostile activity at this time, but they are well within the outer perimeter. Echo 4, copy. We're alerting the Ready 5 now. Due to recent events in the Middle East, the MOD has put the Navy on notice for possible deployment. All carrier pilots must be certified for flight duty within the next 24 hours. You will be conducting air combat training as part of a joint readiness exercise with Air Force units in Scotland. All weapons fire and damage will be simulated using virtual combat systems installed in your aircraft. Your combat and flight performance will be evaluated in real time by instructors on the ground. Monroe. As new pilot in the squadron, I'm going to be paying special attention to you. Report to the flight line for your aircraft assignment. Unidentified aircraft, this is Joint Training Command. This is your final warning. Congratulations, Monroe. That was a fine bit of flying. At approximately 0800 hours yesterday, Insurgent forces attacked Prince Faisal Air Base with as many as a dozen cruise missiles. The base sustained heavy damage. Current estimates are 30 aircraft destroyed and more than 400 casualties so far. Colonel David Crenshaw, one of our senior pilots, was on patrol when the attack began and was shot down and captured by the insurgents. Crenshaw would be considered a high-value target with knowledge of numerous classified operations. Intel believes that he'll be taken to an insurgent safe house and tortured for information. Intel has narrowed down a list of possible sites where Crenshaw might be held. We're gonna put a drone over the area and check things out. If he's there, we are damn sure gonna find him. Attention all squadrons, this is General Vasily Moganov, commander of forces in the North Caucasus military district. 
A state of emergency is now in effect. After months of terrorist attacks, Separatist forces have launched a surprise military offensive to take over the entire region. After many hours of hard fighting, Royal Russian forces under my command have surrounded the Separatist leaders in the mountains close to the border. A decisive blow will crush the wound and erase this stain on our nation's honor. In a desperate attempt to save their leaders, a small Separatist force has seized one of our airfields close to the combat zone and captured a large number of bomber and cargo aircraft. Those planes are on the way now to rescue the Separatist leaders. Your orders are to intercept those planes and force them to turn back or be destroyed. Wait. Now increase speed gradually to bring your plane in closer. Fuel transfer. Fuel transfer complete. You're clear, right away. Let me lay it on the line for you, Major. The squadron you're reporting to was pretty much wiped out yesterday. The CO would normally be the one to welcome you to the squadron, but he's in surgery right now, and the XO is dead. The insurgents knew exactly where to hit us. Our unit alone lost most of its aircraft and 90% of its personnel. We've got a priority mission to fly later today. One of our pilots was shot down during the attack on the base, and intel reports that he was captured by insurgent troops. Cell phone intercepts suggest that he has been moved to a compound in the desert, where he will be executed shortly before dawn. A special forces team is going in to rescue Colonel Crenshaw. You'll fly an AC-130 gunship to provide close air support, while I coordinate the operation from an AWACS nearby. a lot of good people at Prince Faisal. Pretty much the entire squadron, from the CO on down. With Colonel Avery dead, I've been ordered to assume temporary command of the squadron. But the docs say I won't be flying anytime soon. My job now is to get Hawks back to operational status with the few pilots we've got left. Lieutenant Colonel Sims is senior surviving pilot, so I'm assigning him as flight leader. Major Walters will fly on Sims' wing and cover your six when you need it. They're both veteran pilots, so when they talk, Major Hunter, you listen. We'll work out the rest of the details as we go along. Right now, we got a mission to fly. The situation on the ground is getting worse by the day, and CENTCOM needs all the pilots he can get. Heavily armed insurgent groups have begun attacking commercial and industrial targets across the region. Just this morning, a large insurgent force seized Arnico's offshore oil facility, located in the Indian Ocean. Intel believes that the insurgents are planning to sell the captured oil on the black market to finance future operations. CENTCOM's launching an operation to retake the Arnico facility. Hunter, you'll fly close air support for the assault team. Sims and Walters will provide escort, while I coordinate the mission from the Roosevelt. Let's go get them.
analysis of weapons fragments from Prince Faisal Air Base indicates that the weapons used in the insurgent attack were Russian-made KH-16 cruise missiles. Naturally, the Russian government has denied any involvement in the attack, and their intelligence services are cooperating with us to find out who is responsible. One of the FSB's top agents reported that an African arms smuggler, Ahmed Faridi, has been in close contact with a number of high-ranking insurgent leaders. The Russians believe Faridi is the middleman who's been supplying the insurgents with their new weapons. The FSB says their agents infiltrated Faridi's organization and exposed the smuggler's entire network. We're going in with the UAV to gather intel and mark targets for a possible airstrike if the report checks out. Hunter, we've got a narrow window of opportunity here to strike a major blow against the insurgents. It's only an hour until dawn. At that point, Faridi's people will realize he's dead. They'll warn off the insurgents and relocate the entire network. It could take us months, even years, to track them down again. We've got a stealth F-35 on the deck, armed and ready to go, and the Pentagon's given us clearance for a surgical strike. Let's take them out. The airstrike on Faridi's network is already having a major effect on the insurgents' operations. The loss of several high-ranking leaders and the disruption of their weapons pipeline have stopped the offensive in its tracks. Intel has been going over the data we brought back from Africa. All right. You've told them that the money is not an issue. Voice print analysis confirms that the overall leader of the insurgent groups is Mansur Hafiz, a wealthy financier with business interest in Russia and the Middle East. Apparently, Hafiz dodged a bullet in Africa. 48 hours ago, he surfaced in Burj al Nasser, a remote mountain city that is a known insurgent stronghold. CENTCOM has planned a major operation to take the city, starting with an air mobile assault to secure the city's airport. You'll be providing close air support during the opening phase of the attack. To maintain the element of surprise, you'll be approaching the city along a narrow winding canyon to the south. It'll be dark in a couple hours. The assault force is going to dig in around the airport and wait for reinforcements. Firebird, leave copy, fastball. Tell them they better get busy. I can already see more enemy units forming up to the north. I've got a feeling it's going to be a long night. Our forces are in control of the Burj Al Nasser airport, but insurgent forces are counterattacking in large numbers from the city itself. Our perimeter is holding for now, but if we don't get reinforcements soon, we're going to be in trouble. The problem is the air defense network inside the city. As long as the radars and SAM sites are active, we can't bring in any heavy transports. CENTCOM says they can send us a flight of electronic warfare planes to help with the SAM sites. We got to take care of that network ourselves. A couple of A-10s made it through the canyon earlier this evening. One still carrying its full load of air-to-ground ordnance. Your orders are to take the Warthog and knock out the city's power plants. That'll shut down the radar nets so we can start bringing in the transports. I got the EW planes on my scope now, exiting the canyon at Angels 2. Now that we've neutralized the city's air defense net, we've got the upper hand on Hafiz and his men. Our ground units have the reinforcements they need. Now we're ready to begin the final phase of the operation. You'll be providing close air support to the ground forces as they advance into the city. Our primary objective is the capture of Mansur Hafiz. We want to know who his Russian allies are and what they stand to gain from supporting the insurgents. And speaking of the Russians, we've been informed that our friend Wolfhound managed to infiltrate the city just before the assault. He's looking for a fees now. We're supposed to make contact once we're inside the city, and he'll lead us right to him. Firebird 1-5, this is Firebird lead. 
fastball report. The unthinkable has occurred. The Separatist agents, aided by corrupt Russian officers, have obtained three tactical nuclear warheads from a strategic artillery depot near Ulyanovsk. According to the FSB, the warheads were smuggled onto a train bound for Tbilisi, but bureaucratic delays in Moscow prevented us from getting word in time to stop them before they crossed into Separatist territory. The Separatists think they're out of danger, but they're wrong. I'm going to lead a hand-picked force behind enemy lines to recover those weapons. The FSB has an agent on the train now. When we give the word, he will disable the train so our troops can board it and secure the warheads. Once the Separatists realize what we're doing, it's certain they'll do everything in their power to stop us. That's why I ask for you, Captain. I need the best fighter pilots I can get to make sure the assault team reaches the target. What the hell do you mean, Drachev? It's got to be there. Search the train from end to end if you have to. We have. The Separatists must have diverted the third war just before loading the train. It could be anywhere now. Then there's nothing we can do about it now, Drachev. We'll take what we've got. All units, commence phase three. The first phase of the operation is complete. Our assault caught the enemy by surprise. And we've accomplished our initial objectives. And now comes the difficult part. We have two of the stolen warheads in our hands. And they must be returned to Russian territory at all costs. There is no time to waste. The Separatist units are already moving to cut off our escape. And their air defense network has gone on full alert. We're going to have to fight our way out. We're loading one warhead on each transport. I'll go with the lead plane and Agent Rachev will fly on the other. Denisov, you and your pilots will provide escort. Don't let those bastards anywhere near the transports, understood?
Control flight 301, coming up on the Ramashkino oil field now, on course for Qatar. ETA. Air defense control, this is 301. A nuclear bomb has exploded at Ramashkino. Can you read me? Air defense! The information I'm about to give you is classified as a matter of state security. At approximately 1100 hours local time, enemies of the Russian people detonated a nuclear weapon at the Romeshkino oil fields. Hundreds are feared dead. And one of our country's major energy production centers has been completely destroyed. It is undeniable that the liberal pro-Western policies of President Karl Gazette's government is at least partly to blame for this catastrophe. That is why a group of patriotic citizens led by noted statesman Alexander Treskiev and supported by senior members of the military have forced President Karl Gazette to step down and assume control of the government for the duration of the present emergency. I have informed President Treskiev that Spetsgruppe Medved will find the perpetrators of this atrocity and make them pay for what they've done. We've received intelligence indicating that the Separatist leaders are gathering tonight for a high-level meeting. No doubt to discuss strategy in the wake of the attack. We will fill the air with hunter-killer drones. And when the bastards show their faces, we'll put a missile right between their eyes. Justice for the lives lost at Romeshkino. Justice for our brothers who died at Nevskaya Dam. All units return to base. Rest assured, I will inform President Treskiev that our mission was a complete success. Well done, Dmitry Ivanovich. His planes unarmed. But it's fast. We'll need all the speed we can get to make it to the rendezvous point in time. Colonel Crenshaw, this is Wolfhound. By now you are no doubt aware of the nuclear detonation at Gromashkino and the communications blackout that followed. You may also be aware that Alexander Treskayev and a cabal of Orwell parts forced President Karskazev to step down and seize power for themselves. What you do not know is that Treskayev and his supporters created the crisis that made this coup possible. They hired former Russian soldiers to masquerade as separatists in southern Russia, and a Russian general named Vasily Morganov supplied these mercenaries with weapons meant for his own troops. Morganov also used his men to pass weapons on to Hafiz. The insurgent attacks were meant to stretch your military thin and keep you from interfering in their plans. The blast at Romashkino was just the beginning. A second nuke has been delivered to the insurgents and is on its way to its target. I have recordings in my possession that will prove all of this, and a loyalist pilot has agreed to help deliver them to you. We'll be flying out of the country in a stolen fighter. Meet me at the coordinates provided, and be ready for a fight. General Morganov is going to come after us with everything he's got. This is Medved Flight Leader. Reduce throttle and alter course to 010 or we will shoot you down. You've got nowhere left to go, so... We have you on our scopes at 019 or range 20 miles. Stand by.
Thanks to intel provided by Agent Drachev, we've learned the Russian ultranationalists have supplied the insurgents with a tactical nuclear bomb, which they plan to detonate here in Cape Town. The South African authorities have locked down the airport and the harbor, but we have to assume that the weapon is already inside the city and being prepared for detonation. It's not clear yet if this operation is connected to the sudden Russian military buildup in the North Sea region. Right now, we've got one ace in the hole. Drachev was able to remotely activate the warhead's radio locator beacon, which was designed to help searchers locate the device in the event of a plane crash or other mishap. The beacon has a very short range, however, so the best chance of locating it quickly is by an aerial search. Hunter, you'll be conducting the search. Walters will be standing by with Drachev and an EOD team. They'll move in as soon as the warhead is located. Colonel Sims will be coordinating the operation from an AWACS bird offshore. You can bet the conservatives will do everything they can to protect that nuke, so be prepared for anything. It has been a full month since Russian naval and airborne assault forces staged an invasion of Norway from their bases along the Kola Peninsula. Their objective was to seize control of the North Sea oil fields to replace energy capacity lost after the destruction of the Romeshkino oil complex. The United Kingdom and other NATO powers are assembling an expeditionary force to help our Norwegian allies liberate their country. The Queen Victoria and her task force have been ordered into the Norwegian Sea to support this effort. We're heading towards the Norwegian coast at best possible speed, but the latest satellite images confirm that Russian naval units are moving to intercept us. The Admiralty assures us that help is on the way, but until they arrive, we are on our own. At their present speed, the Russians will be in range in just a few minutes. All pilots report to your planes. Queen Victoria has reached the Norwegian coast, and the captain reports that temporary repairs have been completed. At 0500 hours, we will commence Operation Triton, which will create a beachhead for NATO reinforcements to come ashore near Oslo. U.S. naval forces have been spread thin, countering Russian-backed insurgent attacks in Asia and the Middle East. So we're the primary combat force for the operation. Because the Russians are blinding our reconnaissance satellites, intel on enemy positions along the coast is sketchy. We're compiling new maps using data provided by the GOI-2 satellite, but to ensure pinpoint accuracy, we're going to have to bring the fleet in very close to shore. During the initial phase, we'll be inserting special operations troops along the Norwegian coast. Your flight will provide close air support for the ghost team until they reach the shore. Then you'll cover the fleet for the second phase of the attack. Heavy fighting continues in Norway, and over the last 48 hours, the Russians have sent a steady stream of reinforcements into the region. 
with most of Russia's combat troops deployed outside the country. The Pentagon believes that we have a window of opportunity to strike at Treskiev and the ultra-nationalists directly and remove them from power. We have special forces troops in Russia right now coordinating with Russian military units loyal to President Kuzkazev. 1,500 hours, these troops will enter Moscow and force their way to Red Square, where they will surround the Kremlin and attempt to take Treskiev into custody. One of Treskiev's key supporters, General Vasily Morganov, is in position south of the city with a large force of elite troops. It's certain that he'll try to rescue Treskiev as soon as the fighting starts. Your job is to make sure that doesn't happen. This is Ghost Lead. We're moving to secure the objective now. Bullseye copies. Be advised, lead elements of Morganov's forces are approaching Red Square from the south. Solid copy, Bullseye. Keep them off our backs until we get this thing locked down. These guys are your old squadron mates, aren't they, Sokov? Are you sure you can pull the trigger on them? Don't worry about him, Walters. He'll do whatever it takes. You just focus on staying alive for the next 60 seconds. These guys are from Medved, Morganov's special operations unit. You make one wrong move and they'll be all over you. No worries, boss. I'll watch my six. At this point, the only way we can stop them is to knock out the bridges over the Muska River. You are clear to... Ghost lead, this is Bullseye. You are clear. Is the target secure? We've got a few holdouts in the lower vaults. No sign of Treskayev yet. Bullseye, Raider lead. What's the word on Morganov? The General's forces are pulling back. He knows that he's lost. You think he'll surrender? This guy? Not a chance. Right now, Morganov's got a whole army at his back, and nothing left to lose. The operation in Moscow was a success. President Karskazev is back in power, and Russian troops in Norway have been ordered to stand down. General Morganov and many of his troops managed to escape from Loyalist forces outside the city. Drachev has tracked the general to a nuclear missile base near Kamchatka. His troops have overrun the facility, and it appears that he is in the process of retargeting the missiles and preparing them for launch. We've got to stop him before he's ready to fire. Your mission is to attack the base's command bunker and kill Morganov before he can launch his missiles. Special Forces troops are preparing to launch a ground attack to open a path for you through the base's defense network. This is Morganov's last stand. It's not going down without one hell of a fight. Attention, approaching forces. This is General Vasily Morganov, commander of Svetsgruppe Med. Do not attempt to approach this base. You are no enemy, Pauls. But if you try to interfere, we'll kill you, nonetheless. If we are not your enemy, General, that in is. There are forces upon this earth more powerful than nations. They push us about as they see fit and sacrifice us when it suits them, Dodger. Men like us are nothing but points to them. They used Treskia, they used me, they convinced me to violate my sacred oath, and thousands of Russians paid the price, but I'm not going to let them get away with it! Morgan, I think about what you're doing. If you launch those nukes, no matter where you target them, you're going to kill millions of innocent lives! I know. And I regret that. But these monsters must be stopped. I don't expect you to understand, not now. One day... <laughs> Who are these people? It doesn't matter. If you can't touch them, then I can. Then I will. I won't let you do this, General. Spare your men's lives and surrender peacefully. There's no going back for us now. Except all we have left is this one final victory. And we will see. I think we're all in for a world of hurt. Here we go, bandits at 12 o'clock. Co out. They're coming in hot. This is Drachev. Artillery fire has stopped. We're moving on to the objective. Striker lead, this is Liberty. You're clear to engage the primary target. Striker lead copies. Weapon arm. Striker flight, this is lead. I'm going after the bunker. Keep those bandits off my six. No worries, boss. We got your back. Let's get it done. Liberty, this is striker lead. 
I'm seeing it. Striker lead aboard. Break off now. Oh my god, he's down. Liberty, striker lead is down. Sims is dead. Striker flight, this is Liberty. Morganov has activated the missile launch system. We've got a missile silo opening and preparing to launch. What happened to Sims? What the hell was that? Morganov's access to Russian's orbital laser array. He's using it to cover the missile launch. Liberty, we got... We got indications that Morganov's getting another wave of missiles ready to launch. Those mobile missile launchers have been coming out of an underground garage at the feet of Morganov's bunker. The far end of that garage is a ventilation shaft that connects to the bunker. That's your target. Walters, you'll take point. Your job is to get those garage doors open for Striker 3. You are the man, 3. Stay on my six and don't stop for anything. Got it? See you on the other side. I'm almost there. Just a few more seconds. Walters, you're being spiked. Break off. Not yet. I'm almost... Target. Make it count. Jeff, this is Liberty. Are you picking up any signs of activity at the launch site? No, no activity whatsoever. The command bunker has been destroyed. Striker 3 3, you did it. <laughs> you pulled the world back from the brink. I'd recommend you for every medal in the books, but I don't think they'd be enough. A great many people will use their lives, my friend. People will never know how to extinction. Or the sacrifices made in their name. <laughs>